Okay. So we're going to run through our 10, 10 or 11 terms. And the beauty of these 10 or 11 terms is it's going to help you to understand slavery in the early modern and modern world. And understand how important slavery was. And in your second paper, we're going to ask you what was the most crucial factor in the development of the world. You're going to look at all these factors. Um, and you're going to look at slavery, you're going to look at exploration, you're going to look at disease, you're going to look at art and architecture. Or you're going to pick from them and then say, this was an important factor. Well, one of the most important factors was slavery. So how can we understand slavery? Slavery happened from the, the first point of exploration of the New World, from 1492 onward, right up to the 1800s, and of course, as we know in the United States, right up to the Civil War. So how do we understand slavery? So there are ten terms, if we can graph those, we can get a good understanding of slavery. So the first one is triangular trade. Triangular trade. What's that? Can you... The trade between where? What are the points? Europe. 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 Africa. 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 The New World. And the Americas. I like that term, the Americas. Because with slavery, we've got to be very careful to stay away from the idea, because we know slavery in the South. But slavery was actually even bigger in Brazil and the Caribbean. And the, some of these Caribbean islands were just totally given over to plantations. So the Americas. The triangular trade. So we, we've said that slave traders and slave ships, vast numbers of slave ships would go from Europe to Africa and take slaves to the New World, to the Americas, and then bring um, products and goods and crops especially back to Europe for sale and for profit. And those profits are very important. A lot of historians don't look at money so much in history. They look at people, they look at battles. But if we really start to look closely, the profits were immense from the slave trade. And the profits brought capital back to Europeans. Capital. And so they could put that capital to use. That's what you do when you want to start a business. You go to the bank, get a loan, that's your capital. And the Europeans profited from those crops, sugar especially, and they had capital to put to use in their own countries and start developing industry. So that's the idea of capitalism and slavery. How is slavery linked to the growth of industry or to the Industrial Revolution? Well, the concept is capitalism and slavery. Slavery gave Europeans surplus capital. We have another image there. Capitalism and slavery. So what's happening to Africa if Europe, Europe is developing with capitalism? Well, when they go to Africa, they have allies in these African kingdoms, a lot of powerful African kingdoms in the Congo and in West Africa, the Ivory Coast, and they make alliances with them. And what do they give them as part of those alliances? Guns. And they get their captives or their slaves. So we get a gun and slave cycle. And this has what you describe as deleterious effects. This is bad effects on Africa. Africa becomes more unstable. The gun-slave cycle. Africa is becoming unstable. I can't draw a gun. So the gun slave let's draw a circle for a cycle. The gun-slave cycle. Okay? And that's, so you know what that describes. The destabilization of Africa as European powers forge alliances with African kingdoms. So, what it's all about, where does the money come from? The money comes from the crops, and the most prominent crop is sugar. And they started growing sugar in Crete, and started growing sugar in Sicily, but then as they start to explore the New World and bring slaves to the New World, they realize that sugar, just, sugar growth can just explode. So the growth, the expansion of sugar production with the inclusion of slaves, the expansion of sugar production in the New World with the inclusion of slaves is called the slave sugar complex. Slave sugar complex. Sugar growth just takes off. It just explodes. The world has never seen anything like it. The growth in sugar is in, sh in sugar growth and sugar sales and sugar production and sugar exports just takes off. And there's more demand, more land in the New World is used. Brazilian sugar is exported back to Europe. It's such a huge economic boost, the slave sugar complex. All right, well, give me another term. Agency. 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 Now, in all this, we have to remember that the Africans weren't victims 
And when you're not a victim, you have agency. You can act. You can be an agent. An agent is something that acts. You know that from medical terms too, right? That's an agent. So an agent is somebody who acts. We have to remember these Africans are agents. They could act in their own right. The opposite of that is being a sample. Those are people who can't act in their own right. That's a negative stereotype of a childlike African, African American, the Sambo image. If you look that up, you see Sambo in the Deep South, negative portrayals in, in the culture in the Deep South in the 1800s, 1900s. So agency versus a Sambo. So I'll throw Sambo up there. One of the ways the Africans could act was if, if we were in, had a cultural mix between Africans and Europeans. What's it called when cultures mix? Creole. Creole. So Creole, just like food mixes a Creole or language mixes mm -hmm. a Creole, when cultures mix, it's a Creole. And so we see generations of Africans who were able to work for and with the European powers, and they developed their own culture. And these people are called Atlantic Creoles. Africans who were able to thrive in the mixed culture of Europe and Africa. So they could be warriors fighting for the Europeans, they could be mariners sailing for the Europeans, or otherwise working for the Europeans, Atlantic Creoles. But over time, race perceptions start to settle in. Laws are passed, black codes in the Côte Noir and the French colonies, and over time it becomes defined, because of the huge numbers of African slaves, it becomes defined that race starts to separate Europeans from Africans. People start to develop ideas about race, pseudo-scientific ideas or religious ideas that black people are damned, Africans are damned, Africans are physically inferior, whether it's scientific or they're damned in religion because of what was called the curse of Ham. So they start making, as they're making slavery, they start making race. And racism starts to develop, the idea of racism. So they're making slavery making race. And two different types of societies start to develop, right? Mm -hmm. What are the two different types of societies? Slavery societies. Slave societies. And societies of slaves. slaves. And when you think about it, it's very easy to understand what those are. Slave societies are totally dependent on slavery for their economy. Brazil is all sugar. There's nothing else going on there. Slave society, completely dependent. All the Car Caribbean islands, the Dutch Antilles, Jamaica, Cuba, are completely dependent. These are slave societies, and racism is very prominent in those societies, you can imagine. But other societies, such as North, the North, Northern states, and communities of America, like Massachusetts, those are just, they have slavery, but they're not slave societies. Societies with slaves. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Missing one. Marlins. Ah, those are, yeah, we don't want to forget those guys. So remember that these are agents. So they could work and exploit the system just as well as anybody as Atlantic Creoles. Or they can flee the system, reject the system. Maroons. That's what the act of marinage. Maroons. They could flee the slave society and establish their own renegade community. So those two words, society and community. So slave maroons are those slaves who leave the slave society and establish a free community. And we see them in Palmares in Brazil, Trelawney Town in Jamaica. All right, so you're gonna match those up um, in the matching quiz online. And then you're gonna have a good concept, especially after you review the slides as well, you have a good concept of what slavery is and how it's an important factor and whether or not you want to include that as a factor.